Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to be installing Proxmox on our Johnsbo N3 NASC build. So in our previous episode, we booted up the system for the first time. We checked all the hardware to make sure that it was being um, read by the UEFI BIOS. And we also flashed the latest firmware on there to make sure that we're fully up to date. I did have a few problems um, enabling the XMP profile, so I've just left that off. And we are running the memory just at the base clock of 4800. So today we're going to be going through the installation of Proxmox on our server and it's going to be our base operating system and I'm going to run you through the steps taken to install this onto your system. If you guys are interested into what hardware that I've installed onto this NAS, you can find links in the description box below. These are affiliate links, uh, they don't come at any cost to you but if you guys click on them and use them, I do get a little kickback from them sales, it doesn't cost any extra to you and I do appreciate you using it, it helps support the channel. So if you guys are ready, we're going to install Proxmox onto our system and I'm going to take you step by step through how to do it. So what we're going to need, we're going to need to download Proxmox from their website and you're going to need a USB stick to, um, to install the ISO onto. So we're going to go to the download here and the one that we want is the Proxmox virtual environment. Let me just reject that. So as you can see here is Proxmox VE 8.3 ISO installer. If you click download on that. So now we're going to use Etcher to flash this ISO image onto the USB drive. So if you guys put your USB drive into your system. So now that we have that installed, we're going to switch across to Bellina Etcher and then we're going to click flash from file. And you guys can't see this, but I will be selecting the ISO from my download folder. And you can see that it's added there, Proxmox VE 8.3.1.ISO. Then you need to select the target. And there is my USB drive here, which is 30 gigabyte. Yours may differ to this, but that's what you need to select, is your USB drive that you've got attached to your system. Then I'm going to click Select. And then finally, we're just going to click Flash. And you'll get a prompt coming up. Just click yes on your Windows prompt. And then the process of flashing shall start. So now that it's finished, you can cross out the application and you can put your USB drive back into your system. So we're now back at the UEFI BIOS and we're just going to reboot our system by control delete. And we've put our USB drive into our system and it should automatically boot into Proxmox. If it doesn't, you can configure the boot priority um, by clicking, I think it's F11. That should take you to your boot priority. And then from there, you can select which one, which, which um, drive you want to boot into. So now that we're at the installation screen, we're now going to install Proxmox. So we want to install Proxmox VE Graphical. So we've got an IP address there from our LAN there. You can see it, 192.168.2.188. So at the very bottom here, we're gonna use our mouse and we're gonna scroll down and click on Agree. And as you can see, our target disk drive is the two terabyte drive we have installed. It's the only one that's there. If you did wanna look at the extra options that were available for you you can look in here but it tells you the file system is x4 um, you can use xfs but i wouldn't recommend using it on the actual installation the way i've got it set up so we're going to click next and then our country so i'm in the united kingdom My time zone is correct now. My keyboard layout, United Kingdom, that's what I want. Obviously you select which region you are in. And then we've got to give our system a password. And then confirm it. And then we're gonna give it an email address. Just put your email address in there. And once you've finished that, you can click on next. 
and now we need to give it a unique host name so it's found at my interface as you can see here it says that the interface is the ENP 0331F not F6 so this interface that is now highlighted green, it's shown that it has an internet connection, so obviously it can do all the updates during the install. Now this is my one gigabyte um, ethernet port. I'm not gonna use the faster port on this motherboard at the moment, because obviously my, my LAN is only um, one gigabyte per second um, a LAN that I have installed in my house. So uh, to use the higher gigabyte per second would probably have no extra benefits for it. Um, this this motherboard did come with a wireless card, which I'll be disabling and not using. Um, it's just there as a backup if I ever have to move my system and I no longer have that um, reliable Ethernet connection. I can enable wireless if I choose to. I can also use that within containers in the future as well if I want to do any Wi-Fi based um, you know projects. I can do. So I'm going to leave that selected to the default, and I'm going to give my server a host name. Starfield dot local and for now that's fine the IP address the gateway is where my router resides on the 2.1 which is fine for the minute click next and it gives you a summary you can see here that the file system is on external 4 and um, it's, it's on the NVMe drive I've got my time zone everything else my email address and my management interface I am giving my server a host name of Starfield because I'm loving that game at the moment and with every sort of system that I ever build, um, especially servers, I always give it some kind of naming convention. I find something that I can relate to like Starfield because it's the game I'm playing um, and then I can name my, um, you know, my virtual machines and my Docker containers around that theme and it's just easy to remember. So I'm going to click on install now and it's gonna create the partitions. So you let this um, go through and I'll skip this and I'll speak to you at the end. Okay, so the installation was successful. We're now gonna click on reboot. And now our system will reboot. Okay, so now that that's rebooted, we are going to be given a IP address, which we can connect to the Proxmox server over the browser from another device on the same subnet. So there is our URL there, and I'm gonna jump over to a browser and I'll see you there. So we're now over on Chrome. We can put in the IP address that it gave us. And then we can click on advanced and proceed to um, the IP address, which is fine. Okay, from here we need to log in with the username root and then the password that we put in on the installation. And then once you've done that and click on login, you will now be on Proxmox. For now, you can click on OK to this. And this is our installation of Proxmox. So in here, you should be able to see our system. You can see that I have uh, 20 CPUs here to use and it should give you, there you are, it gives you the core, it gives you your kernel. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to use the Proxmox VE helper scripts. This will just remove the nagware. Uh, so basically when you log into Proxmox, you'll get uh, prompted to that you don't have subscription, which is kind of irritating if you're just using it for personal use and um, you're not using it for, you know, for production or anything like that. You're not using it in a business. Um, on Proxmox VE helper scripts, we're gonna run this bash script here. This will um, this script provides options for managing Proxmox VE repositories, including disabling the enterprise prox uh, the enterprise repo, adding or correcting PVE sources, enabling the, the no subscription repo, adding the test repo, disabling the subscription nag, that's the big thing for us, updating Proxmox VE and rebooting the system. Okay, and as you can see down here, it says to use the Proxmox VE post install script, run the command below only in the Proxmox VE shell. This script is intended for managing or enhancing the host system directly. And it also asks you, it is recommended to want to yes to all options presented during the, um, during the process. So I'm gonna copy this from here and I'm gonna go back into my Proxmox install. I'm gonna go to the shell 
and then in here I'm going to right click and paste and as you can see we've got the command in that and I'm going to press enter and then it says this script will perform post install routines start the Proxmox VE post install script and I'm going to click yes and it says the package manager will use the correct sources to update the and install packages on your Proxmox VE server and I'm going to put yes the PVE Enterprise repository is only available to users who have purchased a Proxmox V subscription. Disable PVE? Yes. Um, the PVE No Subscription repository provides access to all the open source components of Proxmox VE, so we want to enable that. Yes. The Ceph Package repository, I don't use Ceph, but I'm going to put yes anyway. The PVE Test repository can give advanced users access to new features and updates before they are officially released. Um, I'm going to say yes to that. Uh, and it says disable um, subscription nag, yes. Support the software development team is essential. Check their official website, support subscriptions for pricing. Uh, without their dedicated work, we wouldn't have such an exceptional software. I 100% agree with that too. Okay. And it says here, disable high availability. So if you plan to utilize a single node instead of a cluster environment, you can disable unnecessary high availability HA services, thus reclaiming system resources. If HA becomes necessary at a late stage, the service can be re-enabled. So I'm just going to put yes to disable that because I have a single node. Disable Coro Sync for a Proxmox VE cluster. I'm just going to click yes to that again. Update Proxmox now. Yes, may as well. And then it's asking us to reboot Proxmox VE now. So now that we've installed Proxmox, in the next episode, I'm going to teach you how to um, configure it and set it up and to get it working optimal settings for you and your environment. And yes, yeah, so if you guys are interested in that, please tune into the next episode. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you hit that like and subscribe button, that will help support the channel. In the description box below, there is links to all the hardware that I've used in this Johnsbo N3 server build. If you guys are interested in picking up any of that hardware, then please check that out. They are affiliate links. They come at no cost to you, but they do help support the channel. If you use them, then I get a little small kit back and it keeps me making the content that I enjoy and that you guys obviously will get benefit from. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.